Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I'll show you how to use the white box tools from the processing toolbox in QGIS to delineate catchment and streams. And we'll start from scratch. So I loaded here the OpenStreetMap XYZ tiles and we're going to delineate the Ruhr catchment that I use a lot as an example in my videos. And the outlet is around Roermond. And if you delineate a catchment and you know uh, the name of the river, you need to find the outlet and then you need to estimate the approximate area of the catchment for which you need a digital elevation model. So you need a bit of local knowledge there where you look at the DEM. But here I'm going to download the DEM tiles using the SCTM downloader plugin. Now I've installed the plugin and I have this icon. If I click it, I can choose here the extent and I set it to the canvas extent. And when I click download, it will ask my credentials. So you give the username and password. Uh, and if you don't have it, you can use that link to create a new one. And when you click OK, it will start downloading. After downloading, we can close this dialog. And we see that we have a bit more than uh, we needed. So we're going to uh, remove a few. Make sure you have the right ones by checking and unchecking them to see where they are. So we end up with four tiles. And uh, now we need to mosaic these tiles into one big raster that we can use for further analysis. We'll do that by making a virtual raster. In the raster menu, go to miscellaneous build virtual raster. Then select the four DEM tiles. Make sure you don't select OpenStreetMap. And uh, here we keep the default uh, settings. We don't need to change anything. And it will simply make a virtual mosaic. Virtual means that it will not recreate a huge file, but it will um, do a mosaic on the fly. And there's the result. And now we can remove the other tiles because we will work with the mosaic. The first thing I'm going to do now is to change the projection of the project to UTM because we can't work with uh, geographic coordinate system. But we see here that the mosaic is far too big and is much larger than the area where the Ruhr catchment is. So I can use uh, the Create Layer from Extent tool to draw an extent on the canvas within which I think the catchment fits. So you need a bit of expert knowledge there or interpretation of the, the DEM. And I know it's approximately here. So it uses then the coordinates in the projection of your project. And... Uh, then you can export this to a polygon. I need a temporary one. And now I can check if it still fits within the DEM. And then we're going to use that if I export the DEM to a new layer. It's called a DEM subset. Change the projection to the UTM zone. And then I calculate the extent from that temporary layer with the extent and I make the pixel square to 30 meters. And now we have our subset and I can remove the mosaic. So now we are ready to use the white box tools for further processing. So the first step to delineate the catchment and streams is to fill the DEM to make it hydrologically correct and make sure that all the water flows to the outlet and it doesn't have any artifacts uh, as depressions. But I see here that there's a fill burn tool, which means I can burn in the river network. So I can download the rivers from OpenStreetMap using the quick OSM plugin that I can install from the plugin manager. Then in the dialog, I can say I want waterways and I want as a value river. And I want it in the extent 
of the polygon that we just made and I only want the lines. When I run this query, it will download the rivers from OpenStreetMap that fit within the extent that we defined. If the internet connection is not good enough, you can increase the timeout. But here it's downloading and now parsing the lines. And there are the rivers from OpenStreetMap. Before we can proceed, we need to export this temporary scratch layer and also change the projection to the one of the project. So I'll export it as an S3 shapefile, call it rivers, change the projection to UTM, and then click OK, and there is the result. Now we can use the fill burn tool from Whitebox to burn the rivers into the DEM subset. They need to be in the same projections, that's what we just did. And I call the output DEM burn, and this will make sure that the rivers are always the lowest points locally in the DEM. So we'll force the water to follow the existing rivers from OpenStreetMap in this case. There's our DEM, corrected for the rivers. I open the watershed tool and I see it needs the D8 pointer files and in input and the pore points or outlets. So let's create those. The pointer file, and there are different uh, algorithms that you can use, but I'm just going to use the D8 pointer. And the pointer file is just the flow direction, which has the proper encoding uh, for use here with Whitebox. So I'll call it flow direction. And in the documentation, you can read more about this uh, encoding. And here we see the result. And let's query the result and see, because I see these big patches and I see there that the flow direction is zero. And that's not what we need if we want to delineate catchments. What I need to do is also fill the sinks again. So after fill burn, you also need to apparently fill the sinks. So I'm going to use the fill depressions 1LU algorithm, similar to the one that we have in Saga. And you see that it will fix the flat areas by default checked. And that's exactly what we need. So all the water will go to the outlet. And I call this DM filled. I run it. And there's the result. We still see our burnt uh, river, so that's uh, perfect. And now I can do the D8 pointer again. And I'll save that then to a new name. D8 pointer filled. And now when I query, I see that these are not flat and have uh, directions. So that's what we need. Now the other thing that we need is uh, the outlet. I look here at watershed. So we have the D8 pointer, but we also need our pore points. And we're going to uh, define one outlet for the rural river, which is in rural mont. So if I take open street map, I can pan and zoom to the area where the outlet is. And there we find where the Ruhr River gets into the Meuse. And there's where I'm going to digitize an outlet. I'll create a new scratch layer because it's just now temporary. Call it outlet and it's point as a geometry in the projection of the project. I add one field with the ID, which is a whole number. And then I add the point and just give it ID number one. And now I can use snap pore points because it needs to fit with our filled elevation model and it needs there the flow accumulation, which we don't have yet. So I'm going to calculate the flow accumulation, the D8 flow accumulation, also with white box. 
and I can use as an input the DEM or the D8 pointer file. I use the DEM field and keep the defaults. And then I get the D8 flow accumulation. Here we see the result and we recognize our rivers, which of course have the most accumulated uh, water. And these higher values are then uh, visible here in the map that has a huge range. We can use uh, snap pour points now to snap our digitized outlet to the river. You need to choose a maximum snap distance. And if you make it too big, it will snap uh, more downstream. So let's see what it does here. I run it and there it goes too much downstream. So there I also will have a part of the Meuse River. That's not what I want. So I'm going to change that uh, tolerance value, make it a bit smaller so it snaps closer by. Because I really only want the Ruhr, so it needs to be before where it enters the Meuse. So let's run snap pour points again. And now with a smaller distance, let's take 100 meters. Save it in our new name. And now we see that it snapped closer by. And what it exactly does is it will snap to the closest high value of the flow accumulation to make sure that uh, you are delineating the catchment belonging to the river. So now I can use watershed and I use the D8 pointer file and our snapped outlet. And I can define here the output file name, which I'll call Ruhr Catchment. And then I run it. And it will result in cells with only value 1. And there we have our catchment. And it's exactly the shape that we would expect also from the videos on how to do this with Saga or with grass tools. It's very comparable. So now we can convert the raster to vector polygons with the white box tool in order to have the catchment boundary as a vector polygon. Let's call it rural boundary. And there we have the result. And let's uh, style it in such a way that we can see the boundary as a simple outline and there we have it and we still have that uh, rivers layer from uh, OpenStreetMap and uh, would be nice to clip it so i'm going to use here geoprocessing tools clip use the rivers as input and the overlay layer the boundary Save it to Ruhr Rivers. And there we get the error that we also had with uh, the Saga tools. Uh, when we go from vector to raster, uh, we get artifacts and uh, geometrical problems. So therefore we need to use the fixed geometries tool. So we use the boundary and we fix it here. And now with this fixed one, I can use the clipping tool without any error. And we save it under a new name. And you see now it runs without any problem. You see here that the OpenStreetMap has some, uh, some gaps uh, because not everything was classified as river, but maybe as uh, other uh, tags. So um, you might want to play around with uh, having the right parts of the river from OpenStreetMap. But another thing that you can do is use the delineated river. So we still need to do that. Um, if you go to the white box tools, then there is a tool extract streams. 
and it uses the flow accumulation. We have that already. And then you need to put a threshold there of the amount of material that accumulates, so the amount of cells that accumulate from that point onward, we'll call it a river. So let's try it first with uh, 10,000. So only an accumulation of more than 10,000 pixels will result in a river, and it will create this raster layer with only value 1. And then you can inspect it with the background OpenStreetMap layer or with the um, downloaded rivers. And here we see that we have many more rivers than uh, are on OpenStreetMap. So we need to increase the threshold a bit. It will be hard to have a perfect match because in some areas the delineation does better than in, uh, in other areas. The more natural and the more relief, the better it is. So let's use here 100,000. And here we see that we have now much less uh, streams, maybe a bit too little, so you need to play with that. But uh, the ones that we have here are the large ones, and they have a good match with uh, the rivers on OpenStreetMap. So that's uh, also to confirm that the burning of the rivers uh, really helped. And it's still in raster format, so I can use the two raster to vector lines from Whitebox tools. Save the line as a shapefile and let's call it delineated so we can distinguish it from the other river file. And add a style, make it simple blue. And now we see that we have more continuous rivers based on our delineation. And we can still compare it with the rivers of OpenStreetMap to look at the differences. So this is an iterative process where you uh, can use uh, different tools of uh, Whitebox. You see there are alternatives for filling, of burning the rivers, and uh, different choices that you could make here. Um, but you see that these tools are very uh, fast to calculate and uh, very useful for uh, hydrological analysis. So uh, stay tuned for more videos on this in the near future.